Cool. So uh, we're going to talk about pluribus networks and the OpenStack integration. Uh, my name is Prashant, and I am a principal engineer working on SDN for the last couple of years at Pluribus. For those of you who are not familiar with Pluribus, basically we are a stealth mode startup, uh, three years, uh, funded by some of the big players in the uh, VC industry, uh, NEA, Menlo Ventures, MDV. Um, we have a product which is built around network operating system, virtualization, uh, and we have a, a high performance uh, hardware software integration. So deployments in 19 countries right now, uh, we still haven't GA'd the product completely. Uh, what's our mission? So we are trying to build, uh, bring in the same economics of you know, what server hypervisor industry went through in the last decade or so. Uh, so what are we building? Essentially, it's an OS independent platform. We are compute virtualization stack independent. Uh, we are merchant silicon agnostic, so we, we work with Broadcom and Intel chips. And uh, it's, it, it can run on your hardware of your choice. You can take the OS and run it on white boxes. So what's our product line? Uh, essentially, it's a 2U. Uh, we have two product lines. One is a 2U form factor for 64 10 gigi ports with uh, two, uh, two core Intel Sandwich processor. So that gives you a lot of compute power on the switch. We have a lot of storage in the switch for your, you know, if you're doing some heavy duty uh, analytics uh, and SSD and, H uh, and you know, hard disk on the box for logging and analytics. Uh, besides that, we have a NPU in our 2U form factor, and then we have a 1U form factor with certain reduced hardware specs. So, uh, what are we, uh, so what's our basic unit of management? Uh, from, on the switch, it's what we call as a VNet, so a virtualized network. A virtualized network in a basic form is essentially some kind of an isolation based on VXLAN or VLAN or whatever the customer chooses. But then on top of it, we add on a lot of network services out of the box. Uh, we do IP pool management, uh, we, and we also provide a per VNet uh, storage space. So from an OpenStack perspective, if you're thinking of scenarios where you're going to use glance or you know, uh, vol if you want to store volumes from a storage perspective, that's a pretty interesting scenario. And the other thing to note is that we are kind of, uh, we work with different control planes. So uh, you know, things like OpenStack is one control plane for us. You could use CloudStack, you could use uh, vSphere, OpenFlow, uh, depending on what your need is. So I'm going to be doing a live demo here uh, about uh, our plugin. So essentially, this is a quick uh, dive into what the setup looks like. So we have a two-node compute cluster with a controller, and then that's going to talk with a quantum network controller on our, uh, on our switch. Um, some of the things, uh, we, we worked on Falsam Grizzly, going to Neutron now. And then um, I'm going to be demoing a bunch of these DHCP and then uh, per tenant features, you know, load balancer, routers, et cetera. All right, so let's dive into the demo then. So the thing what I'm going to do start with is basically I'm going to create a network. Uh, so let's go in here, spin up a network, right? So let me go in here, create a network. I'm just going to call it my WWO web farm. I'm going to assign a subnet. And then I'm going to say it's a 162.150.0 slash 24. All right. So once I spin this off, let's go back to the switch and see what happens, right? Our switch is, this is our switch CLI. So a switch is basically part of a fabric. You could have, uh, you could scale up your uh, fabric horizontally with multiple switches. For example, this is a single node fabric here. So if I do a fabric node show, what this shows is that I have a single node in the fabric which is connected. Uh, the next thing to note is that we could have multiple services running on the switch. So these show up once the VNet, con once the VNet virtual network is provisioned, what we are actually doing is we are provisioning a container on the back end which will host network services. And you can plug in additional network services uh, using quantum or uh, something else. So for example, this is our VNet show. So this is showing all the virtual networks on the, uh, which we are provisioned using uh, OpenStack. And then we have DHCP, which is automatically provisioned. So you have a DHCP, which is attached to the service. So let's, and, and then the other thing to note is that IP pool show, right? So IP pool basically shows you the IP pools which are assigned to each of your networks. So right now, let's go back and do a network topology. These are still disconnected networks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up some instances. So I'm going to create a web server here. I'm just going to call it web. And then I'm going to instantiate four web servers in my uh, network. 
and then I'm going to attach, to the, attach it to the WW network. So what this is actually doing is that the VMs, inst VMs uh, are getting instantiated using Nova, and then once the instances come up, they're talking to the DHCP service, which I've already provisioned. So if you go back here, and then if I do a DHCP host show, so I see that you know, the switch picked up and is actually uh, showing some visibility into what is happening on a per VNet basis. So the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to launch another instance, which is going to serve as my client. So if I go back here, and then I'm going to say attach to my external network. So these two are going to be on two different subnets. So if I do a launch here, so and then if you do a DHCP host show, we see that there is a new, net, new host which comes up on a 120.2. So now let's set up a vRouter. So if you look at the network topology, we still have two networks which are not connected. So what we're going to do is we're going to plumb a vRouter in a logical router using your typical uh, OpenStack workflow. So let's go to router here. I'm just going to create a router. And then I'm going to add two legs into it. I want to connect my WW web farm, and I want to create my external uh, network. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add my WW subnet. I'm going to do an add interface. And then once that comes back up, I'm going to set the external gateway. So this external gateway here is going to point to my EXT network, right? So once this comes up, what we're actually doing at the back end is that we are, we are provisioning a, uh, a, a vRouter in, uh, in the particular vNet. So if you go back to the switch CLI, and if I do a vRouter show, so I have two routers which are connected to each of the subnets, or each of the networks. And then the other thing you notice is that we automatically are running RIP in the background using a Zebra and the Quagga suites, and they have picked up the uh, subnets. So this is my network topology now. So let's try it out. So we have logically plumbed everything together. Let's go to the VMs and then try uh, you know, uh, connecting across subnets. So I'm going to use my client, and then I'm going to log into the console. OK. Ah. Okay, let me try my wired network here. Okay, there you go. So, okay, so I'm in my, if I do if config eat zero, you notice that it's on my 150 subnet, right? So let me try to ping into my, uh, the other subnet I just created, which is 200.1, for example, or let's do a 150.1. Okay, so I can connect to my subnet out here. So, So if I do if config eat zero, so I can connect to my uh, gateway out here, 192.168.120.1, right? So essentially, we can talk across. Uh, something is going on in the network. So essentially, what we, what we want to do is we can provision your uh, vRouter or your v, VLB or your load balancers on the fly on this particular um, attached to particular VNet. So if you go back to uh, one of the value props we have is essentially we, we can create a, using a NetWiser platform, you can plumb in uh, multiple switches uh, and then scale across horizontally. And then each of these, you can run multiple uh, control planes. One is, of course, you can have your VNets, which is basic isolation. And then you can have your services zone where you're actually running your, some of your vRouter and your VLB services. And then you, can, you, we can, you could have your native Unix uh, applications and then run it on the switch. Uh, and also, you can run your hypervisor-based applications using, you know, KVM support, which is already plumbed into the um, uh, platform. 
And uh, so, and you can do some advanced services like your traffic class management, your uh, uh, cause or quality of service, or, and you can do some advanced real uh, real time analytics and monitoring. Uh, you know, this speaks to the same thing, which is you can horizontally scale your logical network. You can provision your VNets across multiple uh, switches or top of the rack switches. Um, these are some of the partners uh, we are working with, uh, you know, in different uh, spaces, uh, Red Hat, Tipco, Oracle. And then, um, we, so, so this also serves as an ideal, since we have a uh, compute built into the switch, it also serves as a, uh, you can use it, use it as a uh, head controller node to control your entire um, uh, OpenStack uh, rack. Uh, this is just a quick take on where we are in terms of computation, what our advantages are. Uh, compared to some of the other players in the same space. So uh, thanks. So um, we are at booth C8, where we are running a live demo of this whole, uh, pretty much the virtual network services. We'd love to talk to you if you have any particular scenarios you're interested in. So thanks a lot. <laughs>